Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and in this video I am going to answer one of the most asked questions of 2020 from my YouTube uh, subscription base and that is is COVID-19 a scam and many people have asked me this when I used to record a lot of videos regarding COVID-19 uh, during the March, February, March, April that span of time and I didn't reply I said that when the correct time comes I will reply so today is the reply to that question is COVID-19 scam the reason I posted the video that I finally have COVID-19 infection the reason I put finally is that the only way I can tell whether COVID-19 is a scam or not uh, is to have that infection otherwise there is no other way to judge whether it is new whether it is already existing or whether it is something new or something to worry about that's why I always wanted to have this infection once I have had this infection I already get out of it now it's perfect time for me to answer your question from a patient's point of view from a microbiologist point of view and for from a general point of view uh, as a uh, explorer of science to explain whether COVID-19 is a scam or not or it is real so let's begin okay so the very first thing to get a single word answer I can say no COVID-19 is not a scam whoever is telling this truth I just want them to know one thing that whoever is telling this idea like the COVID-19 is a scam and all whether this disease has occurred to them or not okay so ask them that uh, whether that person already incurred the disease or not so if you already incurred the disease the the disease that I have incurred the COVID-19 disease that I have incurred based on that I'm going to put my comments okay so before judging me or because people are judgmental nowadays so you start typing comments and all so what I can tell you is that wait for some time and listen to what I say because I am not talking from a theoretical point of view anymore I'm talking from theoretical as well as a practical point of view because I already have had this infection so my simple answer to that question is COVID-19 a scam the answer is no definitely not a scam COVID-19 is a real disease now the second question that whether COVID-19 is deadly or dangerous as per the statistics and data that we have right now it's not that much dangerous because till now we have 99% of the people with mildly symptomatic to asymptomatic category and only 1% of the infected people to the really serious category and that is kind of true because not only me but many of my friends my students uh, my uh, my uh, as well as like my seniors they have already incurred this infection and uh, as far I know from my fraternity is that this disease is real first of all and second thing is that most of them get out of this infection even though they have other comorbidity factors many of my seniors who incurred this infection and their family members who incurred their, uh, this, this infection many of them have uh, this issue with hypertension they have the issue with uh, high blood sugar but ultimately they came out of it fine without any such kind of complicated issues okay uh, as per I know uh, from my uh, acquainted people or uh, persons uh, in the surrounding so what I can tell is that it's true the statistics are true that yeah most of the people either have a mildly symptomatic or asymptomatic category and there are very less people with dangerous situations where they have an active problem in their body the problem may be related to liver the problem may be related to the weakened immune system or may be related to any sort of hyperactive immune system or it may be related to the kidney disease so these are and also a problem associated to COPD COLD related uh, complications and relate asthmatic tendencies and related to respiratory illnesses those people are at risk and uh, <clears throat> in my acquaintance I don't have uh, much of the people with this kind of uh, issues so most of them were fine after the infection okay so that is a very simple answer now the big thing the big questions now why and how I am telling that this is a real deal this is not a scam this is not a fake disease which is created which is a misguided propaganda from the day one there are few people out there in the internet spreading this propaganda because you know when a mass is attracted towards something 
then uh, there should be some people there is always in the history uh, as far as history is concerned there is always a set of people who used to spread propaganda and people get attracted towards propaganda it's always a deal so these people they are using as a it is as a propaganda to spread misinformation uh, rumors to the people to gain some popularity and that's what they're doing okay the, now why i'm telling that the first things first is that remember i'm telling not from a theoretical point of view i'm microbiologist i'm a teacher of microbiology as well as all the other immunology and all the subjects for last uh, five six years for phd entrance examinations those who don't know me so i know what i'm talking about from a theory point of view which i already discussed now i'm talking from a patient's point of view a practical point of view after incurring the infection so the proof number one is that what i witnessed first of all i did not have like uh, like i had some symptoms it's not likely that i was not as symptomatic totally i was mildly symptomatic you can tell because i had symptoms i had symptoms with a uh, sore throat very much pain in the throat i had symptom with uh, you know pain in the head and also pain in the jaw both the jaws okay and i also have like uh, the other symptoms associated which is the uh, smell and taste is totally off for almost 6 7 8 days okay so this three different symptoms are not very common okay normally in flu or influenza what happen is that normal uh, fever uh, muscle ache strep throat maybe there sometimes but it normally gets resolved three uh, from 3 to 5 days normally gets resolved at least in my case till now whatever fever i had it got uh, resolved 3 to 5 days which is normal seasonal flu or influenza like illnesses okay that's the term they are coining right influenza like illnesses so they normally are cured within 3 to 5 days either you take medicines or don't generally we take medicine for the, uh, the fever and rest of the things are taken care of not all the time we have strep throat or sore throat in that case we need to take antibiotics other than that we don't take that because it's a viral disease right so now in this case when the onset of disease started onset of symptoms started i also thought that is a seasonal flu right or normal uh, because it also occurred between the junction of uh, the the change in temperatures in india from the summer time into the winter time so generally we have a seasonal flu during this time so i thought it's a seasonal flu so i took medicines for that because i have a throat pain so i thought it's a strep throat so it was diagnosed like a strep throat and i took some antibiotics five days course five into two antibiotic course is uh, is done and along with that i also had fever so i took medicines for fever so what happened is that in that four, first 4 four, 5 days the fever was really high uh, i mean really high means normally 100 to 100.5 i already mentioned that so during that time i had constant fever so i took the medicines and also took the antibiotics so medicines uh, after taking the medicines the fever is gone completely after that the once the fever is gone but that pain in the throat still remains it persists even after 5 days of complete antibiotic course after that course i moved to another antibiotic i thought like okay it's a possibility that i have a you know resistance against uh, that antibiotic so let's move to other although i know that i didn't have resistance but i thought like okay let's try some other antibiotic i moved to another antibiotic a single antibiotic course for 3 days nothing happens same pain and even pain is increasing in the throat so to me at that point very clear that this is not strep throat at that moment i took the test and that test came positive now this is where the first important finding the finding number 1 is that this is totally new to what happened to me earlier uh, throughout my life regarding flu or influenza this is totally different this is not anything like them okay because this is not uh, fitting into the definitions of those so <clears throat> then i go for the test now during that time remember 4 5 6 7 uh, almost 7 8 days are passed I still have my uh, test and smell there is no difference in that now i took the test and after taking the test the day i took the test one day later i find the smell is gone okay first the smell is gone then <clears throat> the result already came that i positive and i found out yeah the smell is gone and this is something new which is not normally common in case of flu or influ uh, influenza many people may tell you that during flu or influenza it also happens like our our uh, mouth area feels bitter you know we don't have that much of interest of eating the reason behind it is that because our mouth uh, they are filled with different layers 
of mucus as well as all the part of runny nose and all so during that situation is very common that we don't generally get really uh, interested in eating at that moment in any any kind of fever it's very common so in that time of feverish situations we generally try to eat spicy things which usually opens our taste buds that's the normal concept right so <clears throat> many people may say it's a similar thing but it's not because in that case the taste still remains but in this case i have smell gone uh, and then after three days the taste is also gone and when i say the taste and smell is gone means it's totally gone and how much intensity is you know i have this uh, detol okay i opened up the detol bottle and tried to smell it absolutely nothing now this level of smell uh, change okay or intensity of taking the smell and it completely changes it is rare it is not done earlier at any point of my life regarding any flu or influenza so that's the point number 2 that the taste and smell out and out means is totally out i don't know about the other people who are watching this who already had the covid because it happens differently for different people because everybody is different their bodies are different and in india we have more than one variety of uh, of this virus so different viral infections different sort of uh, times times of outcome okay so in my case whatever happened i'm i'm explaining based on my practical experience so this is the second point so this is nothing like the first uh, flu or influenza because it's the taste and smell is absolutely gone which is totally unique now the third thing if it's a normal flu or influenza generally it gets resolved within 3 to 4 or 5 days sometimes till 7 days but this one keeps on irritating me even after 7 8 9 10 days now remember i took my test after even 6 7 8 days right and after that 7 8 days passed and still i don't have taste and smell i didn't have that then the pain in the throat still persists and i took a different medications prescribed by the government health ministry and as per their medications they are using different medication different states so <clears throat> in my case it was doxycycline as well as ivermectin both together doxycycline and ivermectin as a combination therapy i took that and when i took it for seven more days and then at the end of the seventh or eighth day of that medical uh, medicine course i found the taste coming back and smell also smell came back for early then taste because smell also uh, gone early then the taste both thing came back now what was the feeling when i was eating something you know as i say the taste is going i can easily taste the sweets okay but i could not taste any other saltier items all taste similar to me but i can taste the sweets okay i can distinguish with what is sweet what is salt but for the salty things if i eat chicken or if i eat uh, a vegetable it's hardly any difference to me at that time and then after seven more days as i said at the end of the medica- medicines i finally got my taste and smell back uh, the fever already gone after five six days five six days of taking the medicines so it's uh, it's uh, it's gone earlier but the pain in the throat also resolves with after the five six days of taking the medicines now <clears throat> after seven eight day i thought i'm completely fine after taking the medicines so uh then after two days another round of i find another round of uh, feverish tendencies you know one day i had a little mild fever and again uh, swollen tonsil adenoids all these regions so the tonsil swells up in a secondary sense and as i know an impact of human body and how the immune system work is that the immune system has two different approaches to deal with any infection one is the primary immune response another one is the secondary immune response the primary immune response <clears throat> starts very early on the onset of the symptoms and continues till 2 weeks it may continue till 2 weeks and uh, during that time span after this 2 week time span some point from 10 days to 14 15 days secondary immune response starts secondary immune response is a must required thing uh, to get rid of the infection totally if you have weak response there then you may catch other infections other bacterial infections as well and that is the reason of maximum cases of death and other uh, complications 
because they have issue with the secondary immune response development. So when the secondary immune response kicks off from 14 days or some 14, 15 days that time span, you have a second kick to it. You know, another kind of response, your tonsil builds, uh, slow, uh, slowly swells up, histamines, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, those things start released. Okay, start to release. As a result of which what happens, you know, you may face allergetic reactions and things. So which I already faced. So I knew that that is the time my body is, is preparing for a secondary immune response. Okay. And in the secondary immune response, the antibody they produce is IgG. In the primary immune response there is an antibody known as IgM. Okay. Or uh, antibody type M. And in the secondary response, IgG antibody, which is specific and specifically bind to the viral particles and specific antigens of the virus and it will destroy that. So the secondary response once kicked up and after that two three days taken and then tonsils again comes to normal and everything uh, go back to normal right now when uh, you know I'm checking with my antibody test I'll also put that there because I'll be testing the antibody tomorrow uh, antibody titer tomorrow both the antibody will be checked IgG as well as IgM antibody levels will be checked and also update you regarding how much the antibody developed and that is the proof that I already incurred the infection and I already uh, uh, my body already have produced the antibody necessary to fight it in the future times. So <clears throat> these are the reasons I said that these three reasons are the top three reasons I found that it is new because ultimately you think about it seven days took I took general medicines then the test happened then another seven days of medicine 14 days done then finally uh, three more days 17 days 17 days taken to resolve it and the biggest thing the fourth important thing that I used uh, I get to know from the people who already incurred the infection is that the after effects this is another thing that make me believe that this is genuine this is real because the after effect if you think about flu and influenza there is no such after effect because when some some people have flu you know sometimes even with flu we go to our normal day to day work we don't bother about it because it's very common we just take the fever medicines and we just get to the work because normally the fever comes at night times and we generally are present at home during night so <clears throat> this third this is the fourth thing and that is the after effects and i found out and also I've read some articles, research articles as well. This after effect of COVID-19 is really, really big. Okay. And the after effect may last from months to even near about like few people reported that they have after effects even after seven, eight, nine months of the COVID infection. This is something which is really unique, really uh, unique. And that makes this disease really genuine. It's a unique disease and the after effect really, I also face some after effect and what after effect, you know, the moment I get uh, back to the normal uh, condition, I get to walk and to try to check whether my <clears throat> vitals are okay, start to work and start to uh, you know, small jogging and stuff. I find it really gasping at the time. I did not have any kind of uh, respiration related issues throughout it. Okay. I have complete oxygen saturation of 97%. Only one day I had oxygen saturation of 93%. Rather than that, uh, most of the time, rest of the time, I have 97, 98% oxygen saturation throughout this time or 99% now. Now, but with this 99% oxygen saturation, when I start to do a little bit of uh, cardiac exercises, I find it really gasping. So it's, uh, it can increase the tiredness in you. It generates fatigue. And what kind of fatigue when I, go downstairs and upstairs and do it two three times my muscles are cramping really really fast compared to the earlier times and it still exists it still persists i don't know how long it will persist but it is still there so this walk jogging cardio as well as this uh, staircase up down these activities leads to fatigue these activities leads to a lot of problem associated with you know uh, you know gasping and tiredness so these things are associated, which is something which is not present in normal flu or influenza. So stop calling it as a normal flu or influenza and stop believing whoever is telling this is a normal flu or influenza or influenza like illness. Because that's why I asked you this question. Whoever is telling you this, just ask them, do you really have this virus in you? Do you really incur it yourself? Because I know many people <clears throat> who did not have any kind of symptoms, although I have some symptoms, but many people don't have any kind of symptoms rather than the smell and taste issue. But even after getting out of it, after one month, one and a half month, two months, they report several kinds of issues, issues related to uh, 
they are related issues related to kidney issues related to the lungs issues related to again this kind of fatigue tiredness extreme tiredness so these things are always associated and why these things will be associated if it's flu just use your brain right so if there is someone try to wash your brain regarding a disease okay i did not reply when many people asked me their a uh, question because at that time whenever i put the video there is a huge view so you know i can i could have easily made a video regarding it to get some views and get some money out of the youtube i did not do that the reason i didn't do that because i wanted to know it myself practically the only way i can know it myself practically is to incur this and once i get this then i said finally i get this and many people uh, re like replied to that uh, video that you know you said finally get this so are you waiting for the disease the answer is yes kind of the reason is that because i want to do what kind of animal this is and i found out it's not that deadly so whatever thing told by who and other uh, organizations about this virus is true but what about that propaganda what about because there are many people are always circulating this propaganda i don't want to take any names but there are many people and they already created huge audience base based on that although youtube deleted their videos and all but still they are doing this in the facebook and other social media platforms and they are bringing nonsensical stuff with unscientific explanations to things and that leads to false uh, convey a message and as a student of science and explorer of science teacher of science i must say my words whatever i think is necessary because i know the people who are talking about this they neither qualified to talk about this nor qualified to explain anything related to the stuff the thing is believe in if you want to believe in science science wants proof without proof it's nothing right so these are the proofs that i presented in the practical situations i understood from the disease and as per this practical explanations and proofs what i can infer is that this disease is a real deal this is not a scam okay so don't underplay this disease if you have this disease if you are mildly symptomatic then uh, you know you know what kind of symptoms you have so you'll go to but if you have uh, if you are asymptomatic after you get back to the normal situation after 14 17 days are over 17 18 days are over then it's my request that you go for a chest x ray or a ct scan of a whole body if you can otherwise go with a chest x ray as well as the antibody titer test as well as a general standard uh, health checkup of overall parameters of your uh, body using a simple blood test go through that it's really really important so when you want to tell me something you cannot show me a google search result i will not take that as granted only a research paper a peer reviewed journal is the proof and we have very less proof regarding this right now in the peer reviewed journals also new journals are coming in but this is a real deal okay this is not this is a new thing this is a real deal yes do not underplay it because it may have a damage that you may not know now but after few years or few months you may get to know that and at that time it may be very dangerous and the time may be running out so it's better you get yourself checked after you get recovery from the disease and second thing if you have this kind of symptoms get it tested many people don't get it tested thinking of you know how other people will think how their neighbors will think and all many people who are living in the apartments they may think like how other people will do this stuff don't fear them because it's a very common thing and remember in the very old videos i mentioned one thing that this disease will be very normal like every other disease like small like like the pox the chicken pox so in what happened is in case of pox you know when somebody incurred the pox they all, this is also highly infectious and that person is isolated 7 8 days it normally takes uh, 8 to 10 days maximum so after that person gets fine so earlier when chicken pox was a new deal many people died and people get frightened and actually to be honest i also incurred chicken pox last year so i know about it very clearly chicken pox was really dangerous and uh, it also has blisters forming throughout your body so that is another very bad thing and but a good thing about chicken pox is that once you incurred that generally it's once in a lifetime so because the 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 response immune response that your body generates it has a memory to protect you throughout your lifespan but a big problem with covid-19 till now is a uh, the idea of recurrence because many people have a recurrence effect although theoretically speaking you, there are memory cells in your body that supposed to protect you now normally in case of this covid-19 
it is found out that those antibodies are protecting you nearly about three months after three months the antibody is fading and generally a second strain a different strain can infect you okay so this is something really uh, really to worry about that's why the vaccines which are coming in they are uh, giving it as a booster dose that you need to take vaccines multiple times it's not likely that you take once like bcg vaccine we have only once throughout the lifetime it will protect us no not like that these vaccines which are coming in you need to take it in the booster dose in a gap of three months right now currently maybe in the future times we can get to a certain situation where the herd immunity will kick in and then we can take it uh, once a year or something like that in a, like a flu shot or something so that can be done that's a separate idea but remember this okay so those who are spreading propaganda if you want to comment you can comment now i i believe that you uh, have not survived till watching this video till this point so whatever those comments will come in nonsensical comment i'm not going to keep them i'm going to delete them because i don't want to explain anything to them but those which are logical comments i'm going to respond to them and let me know what do you think whether it's real or not and also let me know whether you already face it yourself or some member of your family face it yourself okay so that's well it for this video if you like this video please hit the like button if you don't like this video hit the dislike button and also comment regarding your status and also share this video with your friends so that they get to know about the truth too thank you